Okay, we're continuing on this journey, chapter 6, inverses and radical functions and relations, and we've now moved into chapter section 6-6, which we're going to deal with rational exponents. Now, rational is just a fancy word for a fraction or a fractional exponent, a rational exponent. Uh, and here we see key concept, b raised to the power of 1 over n. Now, in this case, of course, b is our base, and 1 over n is our exponent. Now, the denominator of this rational exponent tells us what root, or the nth root, that we're taking the base. And the denominator gives us whether the base is raised to a power. So, for any real number b and any positive integer n, b raised to the power of 1 over n is equal to the nth root of b, except where b is less than 0 and n is even. Now, if b were less than 0, if it's got a negative number with an even, trying to take an even root, squared, fourth, um, sixth, whatever, sixth root, fourth root, squared, uh, then we're going to be dealing with a complex number or an imaginary number. So when, when b is less than 0 and n is even, a complex root may in fact exist. So we got a couple of examples here. We got 27 raised to the power of 1 over 3, which is the same thing or equal to the cube root of 27. And in this case, the cube root of 27 is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Second example, we got negative 16 raised to the power of 1 over 2. Well, this 2 tells us we're taking the square root and our base is negative 16. Well, we know we can't take the square root in the real number world. We can't take the square root of a negative number. Uh, the 1 half tells us that, there, uh, that this negative 16 is going to be raised to the power of 1, which means it's going to just equal itself. And in this case, if we're trying to take the square root of negative 16, well, the square root of 16 is 4, but we got a negative number, so we got um, it's either trying to take the square root of negative 16 or 4i, which, of course, i equals the square root of negative 1. All right, so let's jump over here. We're going to look at a couple of examples, four, in fact, uh, where we're going to be taking expressions and either they're written in exponential form and we're asked to take it in radical form or they're written in exponential form, I mean radical form, and we're asked to write it in exponential form. All right, well, let's proceed here through our example. So uh, this corresponds to page 422 in your textbook. This is example one, uh, the guided practice in example one. So first we're say write a raised to the power of 1 over 5 in radical form. Well, this is just simply going to be the fifth root of A. Not too bad, sloppy 5, but anyway, you get the picture. All right, number two, write the fifth root of C in exponential form. Well, this is just simply going to be C raised to the power of 1 over Five. Can't make a five today. Okay, c raised to the power of one fifth, taking it from radical form to exponential form. All right, now we got right d raised to the power of seven over four in radical form. Well, that denominator four is telling us we're going to be trying to take the fourth root of this variable d. But that 7 in the numerator tells us that d is raised to the power of 7. So taking that in radical form, we're taking the fourth root of d raised to the seventh power. Now, here we got another little interesting one, this fourth one. It says write the cube root of c raised to the power of negative 5 in exponential form. Well, C is our base, 
This negative 5 is going to be in our numerator of this rational exponent. I mean, yeah, numerator of this rational exponent. And the 3, the cube root, is in the denominator. And so we've got c raised to the power of negative 5 over 3. Oh, there you go. That wasn't too bad. It's pretty easy. I uh, wished it would stay that easy, but all in all, this area is not too difficult. As long as you're thinking, keep your head on.